Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at Power Apps Fluent UI Controls in Teams. This is also a continuation of my Hidden Gem series, video number 20. So we'll spend a close amount of time taking a look at what this Fluent UI framework is in Teams, how it gives those really nice controls for Power Apps in the Teams, and then how we can take those and use it in the standalone Power App Studio as well. And I'll show you some tips and tricks and I'll just prove that to you that you can actually use it in both ways. So that's the plan, stick around. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now the whole concept of the Fluent UI framework was introduced in Teams around the July 2021 but then when Power Apps was also introduced to it, by default, the Fluent framework was introduced into Power Apps as well. And I really like the example that's given because Fluent UI framework is actually built on top of the functionality for Fluent Design. But here's really what catches my attention, is that it is able to now spread across all of these different platforms, which is huge because we know that we are such a diverse technology when it comes to both the infrastructure side and the devices we use, the iOSs and the operating systems. And Fluid Framework gives you that flexibility. That's why I was so excited about all these controls. So just thought I'll give you a little introduction on this. I'll put the links down below so you can take a look at it. But now let's see how that works in Microsoft Teams. So here we are inside Microsoft Teams, and now I'm building a Power Apps Canvas Studio. And you know this is something you're familiar with, so I won't spend too much time on that. Here now, when you're going ahead and adding your controls, you come now to either the left side here, or which you see the plus uh, uh, for insert. And in the insert, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a text box. So when I add the text box, and I come back in my tree view, the first thing I notice is it says text box which is a little different from what I've been used to in the Power Apps Canvas Studio. And I'll show you that. When I switch over now to my Canvas Studio, I go to the Insert menu on the ribbon. If I click on Input, or I could do it basically from, from the text, and click on Text, click on Text Input, here's what I see. I see the term Text Input. When I go back into my Canvas on the Teams, I see it as Text Box. It's just a little subtle difference, right? Nothing big, just thought I'd call that out. All right, the next big thing that I noticed was this terminology which I noticed called placeholder. Because I don't see placeholder in the Power App Standalone Studio side. I see hint text, but believe it or not, they're actually the exact same things, and I'll prove that to you. So I come back now to, I mean, it, it, like while we are here, we'll just in, in the Power Apps Canvas Studio, I'll take out the default, and in the hint text, I'll put in the term is that add value here. All right, so I'll just go ahead and do that, and it shows up. So now we go into the Teams, and in Teams inside the placeholder, I'll do the same thing. First, actually, I'll take out the default value, and then I'll put that in as add value here, and it shows up. So again, there's a little bit of a difference in the naming convention, but it serves the same purpose, is that over here, it is called, in Teams, it is called as placeholder. When we go to the standalone studio, it is called as hint text. But just wanna show you one big example, is that if you really like the look and feel in these controls, here is the big wow I'm gonna show you, is that while you select that, the control in Teams, if you do a control C for copying, now when you switch over to the Canvas App Studio, if you do a control V, believe it or not, it shows up over here and you can use it. But here's the great thing, because you might think of it as, hey, you know, I mean, since you're copying it from the Teams Studio over to the standalone Canvas Studio, does it show, you know, is it bound by any limitations which are there in the Canvas, Canvas App Studio? It's a great thought because that's what I was thinking too, but I, the, the idea is it doesn't. So for example, on the left over here, okay, the text input, it showed up these properties. But when I go ahead and now click on the one that I copied from the Teams, it brings all those properties with you. And that's the beauty of it. In fact, that's the big wow. If you don't take away anything from this video, take this away, that you can copy those controls from the team studio, bring it into the standalone, and it works. And in just a few minutes, I'll even prove that it works okay. So, a couple of things you want to keep here in mind is that in the team's controls that you get over, there is something called as accept focus. And by default for this text one, accept focus is what it says that, hey, when you're going to do that tab functionality, um, it will go ahead and allow that to you. Because in Teams, I mean, in the standalone one, we know a functionality called set focus. And over here in the Teams, it is called as accept focus. 
same constant, uh, you know, same idea is that when we were using the tab and it would switch around from one control to the other one, if you go ahead and toggle this off, it won't go ahead and, you know, when you hit the tab, it won't come on over here. I'll, and I'll demo that to you as well. So now that you are, you know, looking at this, I know what some of you are itching. It's like, Daniel, does this work for the calendar view as well? Because that is one of my biggest thorn in the flesh is when it comes over here. And I'd like to be the bearer of that great news is yes, you can go ahead and get that date control. So first of all, for some of you who are not aware, it's like what are these what are, people are concerned talking about? What is Daniel talking about over here? Well, I'll go and show it to you. So here's our infamous date picker, which we have in Power Apps Canvas Studio. If I go and pick on it, I do a play, here's what happens. You know, you can go and do whatever selecting that you do, but until and unless you click that OK button, it will not remember and select what you have already opted for. It doesn't do that. You've got to go ahead and click on that OK button. And that's been what frustrates a lot of people. Now, in the standalone Canvas Studio, which is there in Microsoft Teams, if I go ahead and now select on my left, I'm going ahead and selecting that date picker. Over here, things are a little bit more different. Watch, if I click on the preview, I can click on it and I can go ahead and do whatever selection I want. I do the selection and you see, I didn't have to select it and then go hunting for that OK button. The moment I selected it, two things happened. It recognized and remembered what I selected and it also went ahead and closed the control. This is something that we've been wanting forever in the Power Apps Canvas Studio. And you know what? You can do exactly the same way. You can select it, do the control C, now you go into the Canvas App Studio, and then I do a Control V, and guess what? It works. It's like, yay, this is going to make my life a lot easier. In fact, one of the things I do is I'll go ahead and create a Canvas App Studio directly inside my standalone one, and I've just gone ahead and copied a whole bunch of those controls and kept it over here. That way, I don't have to keep opening the two side by side and copying them for every scenario. I already have it over here. Obviously, you know technology changes, so kind of keep in mind that sometimes you may have to refresh those controls because subtle changes happen which, you know, your existing ones in the ones that you've copied in the standalone may not have. So kind of keep that in the back of our mind. But hey, let's go and just do a side-by-side -side comparison, okay? And by the way, I've noticed something is that, have you, and you might notice this too, is that the standalone one that you copy, you know, direct, I mean, that you have directly inside um, Power Apps Canvas, the default font size should be anywhere from like 13, sometimes 12.5, 13, 14. The one which you get from Teams always usually tends to start at 10 or 10.5. Just a little subtle difference that I noticed. But there you go. Now I have it here. I'm in the Canvas App Studio, the standalone one. I click on the top, I mean the date calendar still functions the exact same way. I have to go ahead and click on the OK. But it's got some neat functionality. You click on the, the month, it gives you a drop down for that. You click on the year, it gives you a drop down for that. So it's, it's got some neat functionalities, you know, the toggle switch back and forth. Um, but you gotta remember what you clicked on and then you gotta click on OK. For this new advanced one with the fluent UI control in from, from Teams, when I go ahead and click on the calendar one, it shows up just the way that we have it over here. And it's got some neat functionalities. For example, in the date and the time, if I go ahead and now click on any one of these things, it shows up, like I can go and select that. I can go ahead and do it over here as well. It just works and it works really well. But guess what? There are these other functionalities as well, the properties that we have. So let's try a few of those, all right? So now that I've selected the new one, let's go and see what these do. So it tells me, gives me an option for show week numbers. So I'm gonna go and select that one first, all right? Let's see what that does. So now that I've selected this, you will see an additional idea over here, I mean, additional column. This is pretty neat because, in fact, right now, we are almost towards the end of the new year. You will see on the left side, the 52nd week is right there. And then after that, you'll see the number changes to one, which shows that in a year, we've got 52 weeks and then it refreshes back to number one. So that's what it is, a show the weeks. We also have the flexibility to go ahead and say, show go to today. Well, what that means is that now, if I go ahead and now select any one of this, I get this new functionality, it says go to today, which is really neat and useful because if I were to go ahead and now say, select any other month, if I go ahead and click on some of that, I wanna go back to today, I don't have to toggle and click on any other ways to find my way back, I just click on go to today and it shows up. See, it went and selected that. A very, very useful control. One of my personal favorites from the team side, and I can go and do a control C, control V, 
and it works just very well over here. Now, one last thing I want to show you about the date control is it actually has some of the functionality which is which Excel people who've been using some of these Excel formulas, you will actually love this functionality. So the concept of first day of the week and then first week of the year, Excel people who've been using macros and formulas, you are very comfortable with this because besides the fact that I can pick and choose what is the first day of the week, um, I can also pick and choose what is the first day of the year. Now, this might not sound very intuitive to us as you know people who have been just building these apps, but those who have been doing Excel formulas will love this because this even helps them for some of the formulas. So go ahead and do like a Bing for any of these formulas, like first day of the week, like do a Bing search for first day of the week, and you'll start seeing those Excel formulas show up because this is very important for that and might do a separate video on that all together. All right, so that was just a whole great fun about the calendar piece over here. Now I want to keep the momentum going and I'll show you another popular one which is buttons. So right here in the standalone Canvas Studio, I click on insert and I go and grab my button and I keep the button over here and that's what it looks like. But if I switch over now to the Teams Power App Studio, in my Teams Power App Studio, again I click on the left side for the insert and I click on button, this is what my button looks like. But more than what it looks like is what are all of these neat toggle functionalities. Because it gives me again the accept focus, same as the set focus. But now it gives me something called button type. And in the button type, it tells me primary or standard. So if I click on the standard, this is what it looks like. So basically it is going ahead and you know updating some of the, the, uh, the coloring piece, but it shows you the function that this is going to be a primary button. Primary button, think of it as or, you know, the one for your screen or the page where that's going to be the button that you go and select, you know, for a primary purpose. Primary purpose is, hey, I fill out all the form, going ahead and submitting that, or this is my primary button to do something which is going to overall, you know, take control or basically the end of that form or end of that, you know, app that you're using. The, um, the standard one could be something which is just for that little control that you're using, you know, just for your going ahead and doing a search for some person to get that information or the city or town. That's basically the understanding of the concept of the button types over there. But again, what's gonna super stoke you is that when I go and click on it, do a control C, switch over my tab, do a control V, and it shows up over here. In fact, if you notice, it remembers the last setting that I had on the team side when I bring it over here, which is a very important thing for you to know. Because you might have actually built some apps on the Teams Canvas Studio and you might have those nice tweaked settings. And when you bring them over here, it remembers those settings. So same thing, when I went on the, on the standard side for the button properties, when I click on primary, it remembers it. When I go ahead and change that directly to secondary, it remembers it. So that's just something that you can do. Again, simple things in the formulas is when you click on it, it shows you the ent entire formula as against just the standard, which is something we are familiar with. Remember when you're going to do visible, edit, display, has the same type of functionality. Over here too is for the button type. When we click on it, it shows up the entire formula. Now, what I wanna show you is the accept focus and how it works. So take for example, I have my calendar, right? So on the left side of the calendar, which is the one from Power Apps, I'll go ahead and leave that as is, but on the right side, it's accept focus, it is on by default. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and toggle off the, uh, um, the accept focus. So now let's go ahead and now hit play, and I'll just make sure I click over here on the top left, and I'm gonna start hitting the tab. So we'll see how it switches over. It changes its focus as I go ahead and click on tab. So currently I'm on the top left text, I'm going to select hit tab, see it switched over to this one, I click tab again, it switched over to this one, now when I click tab, watch happens. See, it switched over to this button one, all right? And then if I click on it again, it has switched over to something else. So what you notice is it, 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 the focus was on this one on the top left text column or the control, it switched over to the text column on the right, it's focus switched over, then we switched over to the calendar control on the left, but it skipped this one and then we went to the button. So if I now go ahead and now try to replicate that scenario, but now I'll turn on the accept focus toggle button to on, and let's try and replicate that. I'll click on this control again on the top left, which is the text one. So we'll start over here. I'm gonna click on tab. So it's focus will shift. I'll go click on the tab. It's focus shifted to this text control. Now I'll click on tab again. It's focus shift to this data control. Now when I click on tab, aha, it did show up over here. 
So kind of understand what that set focus functionality is that it's actually showing you how you can opt in for the set focus, which is basically using that tab control to work over here. A really, really neat functionality, which I wanted to show you because it's a really important one. So what it does is the documentation whose link, by the way, I've put below, it shows you the different, um, you know, you, uh, differences between the UI, uh, the Fluent UI, which is the one in Teams versus the classic control that is there in the Power Apps standalone. And it shows that pretty much for all of these neat controls, it has the checked, I mean, the accept focus control for basically most of them, if not all of them. And that's what I love about the Fluent UI set. And I see more of this coming in. I do believe that the standalone uh, Power App Studio also will start um, you know, integrating with the Fluid, uh, Fluent UI. But until then, you can go ahead and just copy it from the Team Studio, put it into your Power App stand standalone studio, and it works. Okay, so I know what some of you are thinking. So Daniel, I get it, this is awesome. The UI and the UX experience comes in directly from the Teams and it works but can I actually leverage it to save data? Does it actually do and serve its purpose? And I'll do that to prove a point to you. So what, I, what I've done is I'm gonna actually go ahead and now leverage uh, our, 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 you know, the, the star of this one, which is our team, our, our date control, the date picker control, and I'll go ahead and leverage that to actually go ahead and do some saving. So what I'll do is I'll, I, in my um, data connection, I'm actually gonna go ahead and leverage a SharePoint list that I have. It's a very simple list. It basically has its standalone um, you know, title column. And then I went ahead and added a date column for the date and time, all right? So that's basically it. I went and built this list. Now let me go back to my Power App Studio. I'm gonna go ahead and search for my SharePoint um, connection. Go ahead and grab that SharePoint connection. And then I'll also go ahead and get that site. It's a Power Platform test site, got it, got, got the Power Platform test site, and that's the list. And now we've got the data connection set up. Next, I'll just do a very simple um, patch connection. So what I'll do is on the button, I can go and actually change that up. Let's go and see primary. And the primary, I'll go to the button, and then the buttons on select, I'll go ahead and put in a patch function. So I'll go to my patch function, grab the patch, and the patch is going to be for that list, a comma, defaults, grab the defaults, Again, same list, close it, come up, and then I, this is how I start typing in. Usually how I write my patch functions is I at least like to go ahead and make sure all the brackets and all the opening and the close is done so that the errors go away. And then I'll just do the simple thing. I'll go ahead and grab, get the title one, cut the title, and in my title I'll just put in by default the getting the user one, that way I can know who it is. Oh, it gave me that information, cool. And then now I'll go ahead and get my date column, which is arrival. So I do the arrival, and now in the arrival, I gotta make sure I get the correct control. So it's this one. So I select it and it's called as the date picker one underscore one. So let me actually just change that to date picker. Makes it a little easier. Go back to my button. And now here's what I'm gonna say. Date picker. Uh, date picker was date picker. Um, what was it again? One, Daniel, come on, what, date picker. It was just standalone. So date picker, did that, comma, and then all of that. You know basically what it is. I'll come back in and I'll just go ahead and select the value. That's it, all right? In this case, it's not the selected date, it's just select the value. And there you go. So now let's go and do a test. So I'll come back in and I'll go ahead and now select, say I'll select uh, the actual Christmas day. I'll go and click on the button and let's go to our SharePoint site, click on refresh and voila, it came through. So what we were able to do was we were able to copy the controls and get it over here. What you can do is that you can actually even go ahead and have existing buttons. I mean, you wanna you know, have an existing app with the existing controls. If you wanna switch over, you basically go ahead and copy it. First, delete the old one, copy over the new one, and just go ahead and match its control name. That way you don't even have to change the formula because it will work. Wasn't that awesome? The Fluent UI controls from Teams, you can successfully copy them over from the Teams Canvas Studio into the Power App Standalone Canvas Studio, and then the formulas and the whole con controls work, because I just proved that to you. Now keep in mind that some of the properties of the controls and the formulas that you get from the Teams may be different. So when you do a copy and paste, some of the formulas in the standalone one might actually show an error. That's because some of the properties may, names may change. So kind of keep that in mind, all right? But hopefully this was helpful to you. And in closing, I wanna wish you all a very happy holidays because this is my last video for the year 2021. And I wish you all the very best for a happy new year. And as always, keep using Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, and Power Virtual Agents. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you already subscribed to my channel, 
thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.